Knock, knock. Who's there? Ah. Ah, who? Werewolves of London. <laughs> um yeah welcome to the fifth uh, episode of man childing is hard uh the podcast where we unleash your inner child and and or demons on the world um i am Lowell george granath with me today is joshua kramer and we uh, he's just done off of a long day of work as me as well and uh Due to clandestine weather situations, this podcast is crazy late. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> one of the benefits of being your own boss is that you, there's no one to yell at me but me. So, how's your week been, Josh? How's the oh, snow? I, got, I had two snow days. Oh, nice. They didn't actually close the store. I just called in because I wasn't driving. I know. I showed up for one of those days. <laughs> oh, did you? Really? I did. I, I, needed a, I needed a guitar box. I sold a guitar, so... No, oh, nice. Yeah, I needed to ship it out. Um, so yeah, one of the things that we were going to talk about on today's episode is kind of super relevant is uh, signature gear. Um, you know, signature guitars, pedals, amps, lovelies, uh, and just kind of go through, you know, some of our favorites, some of the pitfalls, oh, yeah. some of the triumphs, uh, you know, just all of that stuff. I'm going to stare directly into this camera and just mess with everybody <laughs> with my dead well, doll shark eyes. <laughs> I didn't realize this until just now because I have two monitors and my lower one fritzes out at times. So anything important goes up on the upper one. But my camera is placed on the lower monitor. So I'm looking above the camera in a distance, in a gaze. In a thousand yards stare. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes, man. <laughs> no, so like, okay, so like the reason like I get, I guess that signature gear is super relevant to me is because the first guitar that I ever actually bought myself was a signature guitar. Um, it was a Fender Jagstang. It was like seven. This was back in like 1850 um, <laughs> when I was seven. Oh, yes. It was a very good year for the Jagstang. It was. It just um, crossed the prairie. <laughs> it just crossed the <laughs> Delaware. That's farther back. Um, <laughs> no, it was a uh, different war. I still have it, and it's amazing. And what it kind of cued me in on some of the things that you can do when you get a signature guitar is you get like way more bang for buck, or you get like a signature pedal. Um, and it's usually more than likely going to be dialed into the sound you're looking for, especially if that's a player you're into. Um, you know, one uh, guitar that I've owned a couple of times um, and always kind of occasionally lust after, and then I have to rem remind myself why I got rid of it, is a uh, Yngwie Malmsteen Strat. <laughs> they're fantastically uh, useless. They really are. <laughs> but they're so much fun. Um, it's, uh, yeah, they're just, they're super cool. Uh, but then they're like, you just sit there, because, I mean, what what do you use that for? Oh, I think you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every, both me and Josh uh, at some point went through the neoclassical shred phase. Oh, yeah. Some of us. Still recovering. Some of us have not recovered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined. Turn, I, I kind of like went a different route um, where I, I, I'm turning into more of like a gent lord. <laughs> For real. You can still wear the leather pants in your 60s, man. I don't think anyone's going to want to see that. <laughs> Or maybe no they will. No one wants to see it on Ingve either. But. One of the fun things is like, as a Granoth man, is that we have uh, we start out kind of big, and then we kind of go through our twenties kind of trim, and then we spend our thirties kind of fat, and then it's just like it's just a downhill slope from there. I mean, it's just we get thinner and smaller, and like it's just we emaciate into like like clawed hands and. Uh, I've read that Stephen King book. I actually watched Thinner yesterday. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. No, yeah. literally, me and my w yeah. wife watched it. Um, because what there's nothing really to do. I mean, we're, we feel kind of like snowed in here. I'm from Alaska, so this is kind of snow is kind of weak sauce. But the I'm difference sure. is, is like Alaska, is they're prepared. I mean, so they like they have like all the snow removal equipment. 
things are insulated in a way that's protective against Oh, it's this. the same in Chicago where I'm from. You know, we, a lot of wood stoves, you know. so There's infrastructure there. If the power goes out, no big deal. You just kick the Jenny on because it's something you have. But, like, uh, I really feel like it, it's just everything stopped here. Like, yeah. like um, and I, Texas, man, I, I, I'm going to Texas in two days. And, um, yeah, I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Oh, you'll be fine. But next week's podcast is going to be with my father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my... Uh, leave the leave the kids at home for that one if you want to listen to that. <laughs> I'll bring them. I mean, the kids love that man. <laughs> I don't know. You know, the candy man, the candy man can, you know. <laughs> Um, I, I use that as, uh, one of my friends, um, that I work with, uh, my buddy Brady, I was, uh, Brady's, um, little slightly sheltered, uh, due to his upbringing, but, uh, his, his religious upbringing, but, um, I had to just explain to him, like, he didn't, the candy man code, <laughs> you know, the don't get high on your own supply is the candy man code. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, using candy man as a reference for a drug dealer. It was awkward. It's like uh, one of the la- the fine young ladies that we worked with. I worked when I worked at the Beacock Music Store with uh, with Josh. Was um, her name is Madeline. She is a fantastic human being, but she uh, is kind of sheltered. <laughs> so sometimes I have to explain uncomfortable things, <laughs> or just fun things. It's like, hey, you didn't know what that yeah. was. Like, remember how me and you browbeat her into watching the IT crowd? No, oh, yeah. Yo, I and wouldn't let thanked us. I would not yeah, let she... up, dude. Dude, I would not let up. That's uh, uh that's something that me and Josh both really enjoy too is <laughs> that show is amazing if you have not watched that it. That show's so good. I mean, when did you discover yeah. the IT crowd? Oh, it was years ago. It was um not too long after it ended. Um, cuz I was I watched so much British comedy uh, as it is and it just kind of popped up in my radar. So uh, I think like a year or two maybe after the series ended Many years before the uh, they did the one hour special. Yeah, that, that came. Special. I was actually a fan when that came out. I was super excited. But uh, oh, yeah, it's, it found me. Yeah, I love that show. It found me in a dark time. So like, uh, there was a, a period for me and my wife that we I call the dark times, um, where we just you know everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It's the Murphy's Law years. Um, no, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, so it's just like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, dude, my teeth look amazing in this thing. It's like you're, you know, friends and work with a dentist. Oh yeah, it's like I work with a dentist. I'm thinking about getting a a, a, a diamond right there, <laughs> like Remo Williams. Yes, like exactly. <laughs> like that is exactly what I'm going for. Just in case, you know, I get the head slammed on a thing or cut the glass. Yeah, you can cut the glass. Yeah. I was also thinking about getting a skull. I'm getting some implants done, and uh, we were talking about doing skull shaped molars in the back for real, like. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, if your buddy's a dentist and you guys, like, work together and stuff, like I do, like, it's yeah. like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's, that sounds fun. Never done that before. That's actually his idea, too. That was not my idea. He's like, dude, you want, like, a skull-shaped molar? I'm like, D- are you are you the wizard? <laughs> couple of cool, like, uh, exciting little updates. Um, speaking of signature gear is I have some coming down the pipe. I was going to say, did you p- finally put your Herbie Hancock on a piece of gear? I have several at this point. Um, <laughs> some uh, signature pickups um, made by Fletcher Pickups in Ooh. Britain. Um, I've worked with them. I, I contracted them. They gave me a super good discount on a set of eight string pickups. Um, I had them do a redesign on those a little bit and then i'm gonna do some six string pickups and some eight string pickups um uh the ones that i had make for the eight string were called the necromancers and then my six string pickups and then the new eight string pickups are going to be the luck dragons i'm kind of basing them off a prs dragon pickup because i don't like prs guitars but i love prs dragon pickups those pickups are great they're great they were like um hot yeah, 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 yeah. But you can uh, you can tone them down a little bit. But they're not yeah. like super hot. They're not like ceramic craziness, you know. No. But um, yeah, PRS Dragon pickups. Those are super cool. I wonder if that was a signature guitar for a dragon. I don't know, but they're expensive. And ever since I saw Airheads, oh, I, want, I want one. Yeah. Well, when you have a Smog signature guitar, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that you got to pay a dr- dragon's horde to own it. That's the that's the other fun news is I, I finally talked to some stupid some company. I won't say stupid company. They might watch this. Um, I finally talked to a company into making me uh, like a signature guitar. <laughs> Ooh, I did. Um, What's it gonna be, and how pink is it? It's super pink. Um, uh, okay, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, uh, have you seen the YouTube artist Buried Alive? I'm sure you work with our friend, our good friend Greg, and he's probably made you watch it. Pro- oh yeah, the guy I'm that sure does the video did. game music on the crazy guitar. Oh yeah, that company. It's a company called oh, nice. Lionheart Guitars. I reached out to him, sent him all my stuff, and they they went for it. <laughs> Suckers, they went for it, dude. Um. But I, and then I decided that like, you, you so know what, I, shape, what shape is it? Uh, it's uh, stratish, you know, kind of like it's it's pretty modern looking, um, mm. kind of ergo. But the thing is, is they guaranteed me that it's not neck heavy, which is something I absolutely hate. Um, many guitar players out there, you a neck heavy guitar, mm-hmm. I literally want to throw in a dumpster. I, it could be a 1959 Les Paul, and if that thing is head neck heavy, dumpster time. Or sell it on reverb for ridiculous money time and then maybe throw like ten dollars of that in the dumpster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's been a day, dude. It's not about the money, it's sending the it's message. The, it's the principle. <laughs> I'm a prin- <laughs> if anything, I have a sociopath's dedication to principle. <laughs> I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do not do not waver. Like, did you have you uh ever owned any like signature like music gear oh yeah uh well, i told you uh, i think on our first or second episode my first real guitar was the randy rhodes mm. uh the rr5 yeah the rhodes um, v's are sweet oh god they were great uh then i have yeah my first seven or my second seven string was the jeff loomis signature and that, I mean, I loved nevermore and i loved his playing but i got it because it was the best at the time this is what 2000 seven was the best sounding seven string it was one of the first with the extended scale that was you know public you know mass produced uh ash body maple fretboard so it was so clear on the low end um but i did love that thing and then i mean does a less paul count as a signature guitar? yes yes it very much does <laughs> do you want less paul or do you want more paul I put that switch on my less paul it says less, you know, less paul, more paul. <laughs> i've seen that yeah um um then yeah, beyond that, I think a couple signature pedals here and there, but nothing. Well, uh, like what? Like what? What signature pedal for our listeners? Let's oh, specific. My uh, personal, still my personal favorite overdrive is my Wampler Paisley drive, which for a heavy metal shred guy or was when I got it was seemed like an odd purpose, but man, it is more than paid for I know itself. you like Wampler stuff um I do I'm gonna ma- uh, back when I was do- oh, I'm sorry back when I was doing more uh session recording or amp recording uh, I had my old 60s Princeton and I would put that in there and I could get everything from creamy Eric Johnson to ACDC so it was just a perfect amount well a good overdrive is, is worth its weight in gold oh, yeah. um Wampler is sending me their new pedal oh which one I don't know they won't t- like mm-hmm. they won't tell me um it was not a deal set up by me, set up by my partner in pedal boards to do the president. Dun, 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 dun. It's from Britain. I don't know what their song is. Hail to the Chief. That's not it. What is the one from Britain? No, uh, God Save the Queen. God Save the Queen. Which is, for us, it's my country, tis of thee. <laughs> Isn't saluting with your left hand bad? I shouldn't do that. Oh. I thought that, that was like an F you <laughs> like kind of thing. Eh, kind well, the thing of, is, yeah. is, is it's my net. You're not getting. Co- it's yeah. my natural impulse to salute with my left hand. Like it's my natural impulse to shake with my left hand too, which no one ever wants to do. So I have to kind of like. I'll, you'll see me sometimes when I go to shake a hand. They the, they killed your kind in the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they burned me at the stake, dude. Especially because I'm ambidextrous, so I'm definitely like a oh, wizard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's just oh my god, it's the. I'm super like I've been stressing out about going to Texas, dude. <laughs> It'll be all. Right. I know it will be, but it's just like, uh, places in pandemonium. I do get to pick up my pedal board though. That is awesome. And, yeah, no, it, you'll be. You should hopefully be fine. I can't imagine it by the by the time you get there where you're going. Yeah, well, my dad isn't even there right now. He had to do some stuff in Louisiana, and the highways are all shut down, oh, so yeah. I was kind of stuck there. Um, and it's the weather's not much better there. Um, no. no. 
No, but it's a, a picking up my pedal board from my good buddy Vince. That's gonna be fun. Um, my signature pedal is here, and I have it. I, oh, it's yes. It's called the Super Awesome Fun Pedal Experience, the Silicon Plushy Edition. Um, it's everything that I thought it could be more. It's a fuzz and a reverb that play nice together. Like, that's epic, dude, because that's not something you find. The second you throw... No. I, like, it's a delay. It's a delay and a, um, and a, and a fuzz pedal. So what's the signal chain on that? Fuzz first? Obvi- or... Yeah, obviously, fuzz first. Yeah. But um, it also comes with this very special mega switch that you can use to uh, just kind of create a feedback loop. Um, you, the, the, one of the knobs on the side is super huge, so you can roll the time knob on the delay with your foot. Um, It's stupid cool. It's actually, I was playing with it with a buddy today, and hmm. it's sitting out in my <laughs> in my truck. I should probably go get it. But um, I was, I was checking it. I was showing it around. Yeah, it's not that cold out here now. I was showing it off, and it was... Stupid cool. So the pickups between the pickups guitar, which is gonna have Falcor on it. I actually got an artist to. Uh, I commissioned an artist since the guitar is not gonna really cost me anything. I commissioned an artist, one of my favorite artists. Um, he's a gentleman in Canada. He does a lot of pedal board art. His name's Michael McClennan, mm-hmm. and he um, does pedal art for all sorts of people. But um, mainly my buddy. Uh, uh, shock rock effects brandon shock he does pe- his pedal art and his art is awesome and i was just like dude just dragons of falcor and unicorns and he's even <laughs> I, I guess he kind of just told me what he's working on he's like dude it's you riding on a falcor but like wolverine's riding like shotgun it's like i'm like dude you get me bro <laughs> but it's gonna glow in the dark too it's gonna it's the works dude oh as it should yeah it's gonna be an eight string it's gonna glow in the dark i've been playing nothing but eight string lately i don't know why you're gonna run the fiber run fiber optics through the fretboard <sighs> i don't know i don't know how they do their magic man dude i didn't ask some things are just better not known <laughs> <laughs> it's not known once you take the mystery out of life yeah dude um I'm pretty excited too. Uh, this Saturday, I'm going. Oh yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. Oh, dude, I like the commission. The art process is fun. I actually kind of did it myself, but I'm thinking like sh- shell pink body, uh, purple sparkle binding, ebony fretboard, um, with the purple sparkle binding, a big inlaid rainbow on the body, and then all bunch of glittery magical shit, and then like uh, glow in the dark. All the silly business that I absolutely love. But I've just been doing all these internet videos with the damn eight string and it gets more traction than anything else. So it's just kinda like guess I'm doing Might as well. I'm yeah. sure. Why not? I look forward to seeing it and playing it. Yeah, it's gonna the even like the neck profile's gonna be perfect. It's just I'm so ridiculously stoked. Um one of the signature pieces of gear that I always thought was really cool. I haven't owned one, but I know people that do, and I'm actually thinking about picking one up, is the John Petrucci Dreamscape pedal by TC Electronics. Hmm. Um, I've, I mean, I've seen it. We've sold it. It's like a flange. Uh, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like a flange chorus. It's a modulation pedal, basically. It's just a bunch of different modulations that, mm-hmm. that dude, El Dudorito uses. Um, I don't know. He looks so hardcore now. <laughs> like he looks like a damn barbarian. He like started lifting weights and grew a beard, and his hairline recede just to the perfect point. He he doesn't half-ass anything. I know that hairline doesn't half-ass anything either. I mean, <laughs> no, dude, when you accept it, like it. it and oh you yeah. Just just lean into the skid. It, it looks way better than it does. Um, you know when you're trying to like hide it. I did one of the better oh, yeah. looking dudes I've ever seen in my life oh, was a ball you know, guy. You know, he's like, oh this yeah, it's good. Um, I'm well on the way. I'm another five years. I'll be there too. There's a dude. There's a you get a rug. I know a guy. <laughs> 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 he loves it, dude. He'll, he'll just tell you right out, straight out too. It's a rug. Like you like it? It was very expensive. Yeah. Um, or you can get like my brother um, used Rogaine, and it worked. Yeah. You get main, you my, can get uh, main my, and tail. My fiance has a Captain Picard thing, so I'm just, just releasing it. That's called <laughs> leaning yeah. into the skid, brother. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if it works, if it works, it all works. you gotta do is get yourself a, I don't, a very uncomfortable outfit, and then just have to constantly pull it down. 
<laughs> how can the you know i don't care what i look like as long as she's happy <laughs> how did they why would you in a futuristic utopian future where humanity's figured it out and they're off gallivanting around the, te- the galaxy why on god's earth would they put them in these little polyester like things that they never stay down everyone does that there was like mm. or he'll like put his like Riker or put his leg up on something and be like mm. I don't get it, man. Oh, you may be in the future, but if your costume designers are from the 80s. Seriously. Why don't they just get like a unitard, man? Like just straight up, just one thing. I thought it was. I thought it, some of them were. Yeah. Troy had a unitard. I like, see, I like kind of like the, the the uniforms in the original Star Trek series. I always thought those were better. And then they were kind of like unitards in like Deep Space Nine, weren't they? Like had like the... Just kind of crawl into it. <laughs> At first, yeah. By the time the late '90s came, they were—I uh, think they were two-piece and much more They're purple. I can only—they were I can purple, only speculate. dude, yeah. like Samuel Jackson style, like a purple lightsaber. Um, so have you like uh, rolled across anything fun this week? Because I've rolled across quite a bit of fun things. Oh yeah, I actually dropped some coin on a project I've been always wanted to do. I've always Ooh. wanted to get into stu- studio gear create building and designing Uh, so and i one of the benefits of always working around musicians and techs is you always have somebody who can you always got a guy so i never did learn uh except for here and there you know here and there i could always set up my guitars but wiring or dealing with any electronics always wanted to so i put down the deposit to get a a diy ssl bus compressor kit oh dude that i'm that i'm looking forward to learning how to build it's pcb you know it's through whole pcb it's not the most you know complicated thing in the world but i'm gonna start somewhere into all the mods i can can yeah looking all to the mods i can do um was looking originally at 1176 but uh i saw this deal on the uh the ssl bus compressor and you know the the cool mods you can do with it. Like if I build 1176, there's not many mods I would do to it. But, uh, um, so I just researching all that, looking into, you know, what it takes to put it all together, just transformers, circuit design. I've been just really took my two snow days and really just kind of sat at my computer and geeked out all <laughs> out of all that. <laughs> I don't know if you've barked or you barked up the tree in my YouTube channel, but I, uh, Brian, our friend Ryan Kolick, mm-hmm. he found a guitar, the ugliest damn guitar you've ever seen in a dumpster, and he gave it to me. Oh. I... What was it? It's a... I haven't seen it yet. A marina. I don't... It, dude, I've never seen it before. I couldn't find any information on it. It's really weird. It looks like an oversized can opener huh. um, with more crazy stuff. But um, it's uh, absolutely crazy, and it's one of the things I'm doing with it is I'm turning an ugly guitar into a slightly less ugly guitar. <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, it's 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 it gets, it gets deeper. So I'm, I got it all apart, and I've disassembled it, and I'm kind of like trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm like determining what parts are garbage, because you're just getting into it. But I've been wiring up stuff since I was a child. You know, yeah. like I love that kind of stuff. And I have some fun books on that if you ever wanted to check them out. Um, but I'm like, what? I'm like, dude... This is like a guitar. I just gonna do some fun to it. So I'm like, I'm gonna paint it pink, and I'm gonna make it headless. <laughs> so I ordered a, a bridge. Right, I didn't spend a terrible amount of money on the parts of this, but I got a couple of Gibson humbuckers lying around, just not doing nothing. No, oh, yeah, like that. Uh, Might as well. Yeah, and so I got some components, and I ordered the bridge, and I ordered uh, some spoke rainbow caps for it. I put those in all my guitars. It's pretty much just like. I just ran out. Like I bought like ten of them at one point. Um, Because if you ever tried to buy those, they're not cheap. But occasionally you can get them in lots and buy them. So I bought another small lot of them. And then um, I see a lot of guitars in my future. (laughs) And so I just gonna make a headless, weird-looking guitar, man. I'm gonna order. I can't wait to see. I'm gonna refret it though, because the frets are pretty 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 gone and i'm gonna put some big old nasty jumbo frets in there let's make it a shred beast that's what you should yeah dude it's um 
like I'm really excited for the new Wampler pedal though. I really wish they would have told me what's oh, coming. Yeah. <laughs> they did. <laughs> like it's new. We're gonna release it next Friday. So try to have your video up for them. I'm gonna be in Texas, guys. <laughs> so I hope it shows up before I leave. Because if it does, I'm just gonna throw it in my bag. Because I gotta. I'm going to see a, a, the guy to pick up my pedal board. I'll just shoot the review there. Like, <laughs> yeah, I look forward to. I look forward to seeing it. I'll probably. Beg you to borrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Their pedals. Yeah, dude, that's fine. I I loaned my our, my good friend John the pedal today, and you've got my Space Echo right now. So yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, what's a, still using yeah, it? Dude, what's the point of having this stuff if it doesn't get used? Um, yeah. we're gonna have to get some work done to that Space Echo, but I got a guy. It's yeah. not me. Nice. I ain't doing that. Nope. I've, no. Nope. I know a dude. I'm just gonna be like, dude. But I did find some. Yeah. I, I've been putting it through its paces, so it's getting used. Yeah, but it is still about the damn cleanest space echo you've ever seen. No, oh, yeah, God, it's yeah. pristine, like from no out of mark. Just looks great. Um, it is pristine, although just that one tape head is yeah. It's easy fix. It's the easiest of easy fixes. So yeah. um, that I'm not going to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just don't want to get in there. <laughs> um, apparently, my internet connection has become unstable. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, so like... So, that's why we're recording our own audio. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're recording our own audio. Um, as far as like signature gear, man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm into that point where I'm just going to start getting my own. You know, the YouTube jam and all that other stuff. I'm just going to start acquiring my own. Though there has always been a few that have caught, yeah. that have caught my eye. Mainly because <laughs> James Hetfield signature guitars. I kid, I can't get enough. Like, um, oh, they're good. Uh, I had an e, a real ESP Explorer. We already have his pickups. Yeah, I yeah. do, and they're great. And I, they're in a Gibson Explorer of all guitars because um, I'm a big gigantic nerd. But um, it's just a glorious, a glorious guitars, man. Like from, but I'm talking like the ones that I really want. I could never, I won't. Even if I could afford, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on it. Is the um, the ones from the late '90s, like the Load Reload era, where oh, you had like yeah. the ESP V with like the green flames. That's the one, or like the Explorer with like the uh, like the diamond plate. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like oh my goodness, I did just see um, Marty Friedman's new signature guitar. Yeah, that looked by really Jackson. Cool. It looks really yeah. really cool. Um, I know Jeff Loomis just released another signature. It's a Kelly seven string that looks. I've seen it. Yep, uh, really badass. Yep. Um, I was checking all that stuff out. As far as like the pedal boards of doom thing goes, I'm pretty much like the metal guy. So like I'm always looking at like the the shred guitar players and stuff like that. Um, but the Marty Freeman looked cool. Um, Jeff Loomis looked cool. Um, there's just so many signature guitars out there right now. I know. Um, so I had to throw my. My hat in the ring. Um, I mean, with the obvious exceptions we talked about, how, you know, I always felt a little weird when I was doing more band stuff and more artist stuff. Uh, you know, I never wanted to be to have their somebody's signature guitar and just have it recognizable. Um, I didn't want it to be like just thrown into that group of those signature. Uh, oh, he's just a fan of that person rather than my own just being my own self. Did you ever have that feeling with signature gear? No. Where it was, yeah. No, dude, well, you know me, dude. Like when I, when, I know you have, no when thing. I play, like it's me, it's if there's one, if it's anything, it is yeah. me for better or worse. It's purely me. I would, I would, my focus growing up was to like be my own player and like try to translate mm -hmm. what I heard in my head. And then my pursuit of like musical knowledge was only to further that goal to be able to like think. Oh yeah, well mine was, mine was the same. That's why I was always I never felt completely comfortable playing somebody's signature guitar. Was I felt like I was playing something that was just. I mean, there's obvious exceptions, but just never felt like I was playing something that was me. Um, but uh, felt like I was just. I don't know. Just, I always felt a little too fanboy when I played him on stage. That was, but that just may be me. Yeah, and I never, I never did that. I played my Jag Sting on stage for a good portion of my life, and uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, I still have it, still love it. Um, it needs. I played. It's great. It yeah. needs some work. <laughs> no, it's just it's been. <laughs> Don't we all? Man. It's needed another refret. This will be its fourth refret. Uh, 
Well, it won't break, dude. So it's just like you just wear out the. Just put stainless steels in there. I don't want to do stainless steels. I I will if I I might pay someone to do stainless steels. I've put stainless steel frets in a guitar before, and it's a nightmare. Um, of all nightmares, it takes like four times longer than a normal fret job, for me anyway. I'm not the but. I'm good at doing fret jobs, but I'm not fast at doing fret jobs. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not, like, just cranking them out. I can do a rewire in about 10 minutes, though. I'm just good at rewiring stuff. Yeah. I had our, our good friend Ryan try to get me to rewire his Ibanez for him. And, oh, God. That, oh, yeah. It was so much funny watching him do that in the He store. He uh, asked me if I would do it, and I asked him a few questions, because I know it's a guitar that he's playing on flipping, and I'm just like... How much do you have into this guitar and what do you want to sell it for? He told me, and I'm like, okay, so I will do this for you, but I'm going to be doing a parts order. So I want like a hundred dollars and one hundred and twenty dollars and your discount in like credit if I order some parts. And he's like, Rick said he would do it for forty five, this guy that we used to do work at the shop and I'm like, well, then take it to Rick, dude. Because <laughs> like, if he's doing it for, he's giving it, yeah. do it for forty five. He didn't. Uh, yeah, I'm but, saying uh, if he's gonna do it for forty five bucks, be psh, 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 tally ho, man, get out of here. It's not even worth yeah. my bench. It's not even worth my time. It's less than a hundred bucks, you know, to throw it on the bench. <laughs> but um, if you could have a signature guitar, if you had, like was that was your mm. guitar, what would that guitar oh, be? I thought about that for a while, and I. Have... I don't you know. You got to shoot from the so hip. You got to shoot from the. Yeah, but one guitar yeah. to rule them all. One that, like, just, you know, if you could have just one beast that was built with everything that you needed, what would it be? And who would it be made by? You know, like, the, 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 tell me the deets. Give me the deets. Do it. Do it. Um. Just show me that sweet pucker. Do it. <laughs> it would, uh, it'd be really boring. Uh, Probably, but it would probably be some sort of Les Paul or, or Tele, but with a different configuration on the Tele. Probably humb coil-tapped humbuckers just for versatility, if I only could have one guitar. Um, but yeah, probably either one of one of those. Uh, I do love the mahogany maple combination. Um, I love that sound. I'm, you know, I'm... I'm pretty happy with just a Les Paul, you know. I'm. Not, do you have uh, one yet? Have you really brought down and bought one yet? Oh, I have. I've had. I've had a few. But yeah. do you have one? Uh, I don't have one at, at the moment. No, I just have my you Tele. Gotta get a Les Paul, bro. I know. I gotta get a you're lot of things. Adult. I gotta get a Les Paul, you're but a, you're, you're, I sold it before I moved up here. You're you're an adult. You should. Have. <laughs> you're a well-to-do <laughs> man about town. Get yourself a damn Les Paul, man. I love mine, and I, but the thing is, is like, oh, yeah, I thought great. about getting another one because I kind of wanted a guitar, like a Les Paul, like mm -hmm. I used to have, or like my broken one. And uh, but then I was just like, dude, I've got one, and my gas is not that bad that I have to like have like one of every color, one of every model. No, it's just I've got one good one, and that's like, it's awesome. And it, every time I pick it up, yeah, it's um, it's, it's magnifique. Always, yeah, they always work. Yeah. Yeah, it's just something that I want to do. I'm, I'm a simple. Yeah, I, there was year, there was a time where I would have the specifics. Would have had the specifics for down to like the scale length, the number of frets, the the wiring setup, you know, the shape. But now I'm just I'm not picky anymore. I I I like what I you know I'm or at least I'm simple when it comes to my preferences. I'll take a Les Paul, a Tele, or Strat, or if I had extra even more money, a Sir would be lovely. Ooh. But. Uh, I don't need much more than that. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do love those. Yeah, I've got to play a few Sir Moderns in my time, and it's always been delightful. It's like, oh, dude. Yeah, Gwen said if yeah, Gwen said if we can't go on our honeymoon, I might be able to get a Sir. <laughs> what are you thinking? Like, oh yeah, you're you're gonna be doing the nuptials this summer, aren't you? Yeah, that's where a lot of the that's where the Les Paul money's going. Well, maybe you, you maybe she'll get you one. I don't know. Maybe I can bend her ear. Like, hey, let's give, let's give us some of that sweet paralegal money. I said, I, I just said I was a simple man, but I don't trust her to buy me a guitar. <laughs> uh, I don't trust anybody. You know what? I'm sitting here looking at myself in this camera thing, and I'm feeling like I really need a handlebar mustache. 
You can pull I it can't. Off. I've done it. Sometimes when I shave the beard off, I, I got to do something like crazy for like a week or something. Though I'm threatening for my 20 year high school reunion to do a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hair. It grows back. Yeah, it grows back. Especially mine. My hair grows back super quick. <laughs> so <laughs> it grows like a weed. Um. Okay. So I got another question for you. If you could have okay. maybe something a little bit more. If you could have a signature guitar pedal, what would it be? Hmm. What would it do specifically for you if you had to have one that was just the just the bee's knees and just maybe it could be have a few effects in there? Mine had two because I wanted one that did something. Yeah, I was gonna say like it'd be some some combination of overdrive, delay, and verb. But the thing that I would care most about is that I could change the order of them. Like yeah, so I could do like the standard, you know, uh, overdrive delay into the delay into the verb but then sometimes do the over or the reverb first through the overdrive it's one of my favorite things about uh fender amps uh because the overdrive or the reverb is after the gain stage so you get all these beautiful harmonics in the amp from you know from that so i would love to have a pedal where i could just flip the order of them and uh you know nothing not more probably not spring reverb more room shimmery reverb and then tape delay <laughs> no oh <laughs> of some tape sort delay is the good stuff actually my favorite oh yeah i mean not i don't mean it i don't mean an actual cartridge tape but at least like a tape delay emulation um my favorite one of my favorite delay pedals is the dan electro uh real echo the one that looks kind of looks like a mm-hmm. um i absolutely adore that pedal um I'm building myself a wonk board. That's what I'm calling it is is the wonk board. Is this going to have the crazy shit that I really enjoy? That's definitely ended up on there. I love the fact that I can get at the time knob with my foot. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, oh man, if I could do, you know what I'd really love to do is have a, take the Digitech Whammy 1 and like just put it mm-hmm. in a, a slightly better enclosure. And mm-hmm. that, because that's one of my favorite pedals, and that has been one of my oh, yeah. favorite pedals for the majority of my guitar playing time. It was the fourth pedal I ever bought myself. I, <laughs> my mom got me a Vox Wall and a big green Russian Big Muff, and then I got no, it was the fifth, and then I think I got for like a birthday I got a Dan Electro Fab Tone. And then I got a DOD Icebox chorus from a friend because I was super into like grunge and stuff. And, you know, you got to have chorus. Mm-hmm. But I was also into like Metallica clean tones. And you throw a little bit of like chorus mm-hmm. on there, you really just kind of. Oh, yeah. Because they, they were using like JC 120s and stuff. Um, but the Digitech Whammy changed everything. Octaves, you know, being able to modulate with a treadle. Um, it's about as it was about as game changing oh, yeah. as it could be for me. Um, one of the things that I would love to do at some point, since I'm getting everything else, is to have like a amp built for me. But it would be two amps in one. That's what I would really like to have is two, like, fifty watt amplifiers side by side in one box. One with two ten. Like a combo. Yeah, or? like one with two tens, and mm-hmm. then one with a twelve. And the 12 would be a high gain head, you know, like a mm-hmm. sledgehammery kind of head, thick. I'm not too particular. I use EVH stuff now, but I could, you could, you, the only ones I don't dig are mesas. I just, there's some about mesa sound. It's just not, it's not, it does not resonate with my heart and it makes me unhappy. But it could be a Marshall, you know, I prefer, you know, like JCM. 900 style <laughs> like the 900 better half the people just tuned out or they're sending a the hate mail send a hate mail or whatever just be sure to <laughs> send a check um i like the 800 i like the 900 better than 800 you're not the only one i've heard say it's that. like it's just a thicker sound you know um yeah. 
My favorite Marshall was the J&P, though. It's like, it's not even, it's, oh, yeah, well, but yeah. you just don't get high gain on that. But it would be that and then like a basement style on the other side. And it would basically be able to flip flop between them because I'm tired. Oh, that'd be I'm cool. super yeah. tired of having to sacrifice one or the other to, to suit one or the other. Because right now uh, in the band that I'm currently playing in, the dirty tone is the more important tone. It's the one that's used more. Mm-hmm. So the clean tone is definitely sacrificed for that. My new board's coming, and I'm getting a clean amp. Um, did you ever um, come across or play a Zinke? In your I never life? did. No. Because they have one of his amps is it literally has six different discrete circuits in there. Um, he's not a modeling amp. It would it has all these different types of circuits. So it's almost like you were talking about. Uh, obviously, it's one head, so you you run it through a cab, but. Uh, you should look into them. Yeah, I'll take a peek at that. Right now, I'm uh, trying out some victories, victory amplifiers. Mm. Um, they're sending me one. Um, nice. Well, I uh, yeah. One of the things I'm gonna start doing is uh, since I'm traveling and start traveling a lot for my work, uh, I'm going to start doing traveling reviews. Um, I've approached several companies about getting some stuff, and uh, the president of our fearless leader Lee in pedal boards of doom has gone on my behalf and rallied up a lot of stuff too, but we're going to put together like a little mini rig and they sent me like uh, the duchess and it's like a, it's a tube head that's about yay big and it's flat like a pedal, but it has direct line out so I can plug it right into a, um, Oh yeah. Uh, a, uh, tor- what is it? Uh, what is it? The tor- Oh, the torpedo torpedoes. Yeah. The, the yeah, cab. we're talking about getting one of the, we're talking yeah. with them about getting two notes, two note. Uh, yeah, two, two notes. notes. Yeah. Um, and then so I can just do like yeah. a laptop into the do the head into the two note and then into the into the computer and I can do my reviews nice on the fly in low distant locales. <laughs> Across the United States and possibly Canada. Coming to you from the famous Motel 6. Hey, I upscale it a little bit, I will have you know. Um, (laughs) Actually, no, I really don't care. Coming to you live from the Hampton Inn. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the La Quinta. They're nice, actually. The La, I, I like La, yeah. I actually like La Quinta, and I stay, I've stayed there many a time. Um, but um, I only went up... Uh, when I did my last work trip, I did stay at kind of a poshy hotel just because it was a day, like two, a day before Christmas Eve. And I was just like, dude, seriously, I'm going to stay someplace nice with a hot tub because this is way too close to Christmas. And it just got dropped in my lap. <laughs> um, no, but we're going to, uh, I, you know, cause one of the things when I'm this involved in what I'm doing is that bottom line, is like the, the money if we have x amount of cash you know like and if i'm staying in these poshy hotels that that drops so like i'm in i'm responsible for that money too and we both want to mm-hmm. further like me uh, um me and the founder of this nonprofit that i'm currently working for want to further this so like anything dipping into that is bad news bears i could stay yeah. at a motel like i don't care it could be some i would pre- actually prefer I, to have yeah. an outside door you know <laughs> not have to walk <laughs> through a mile of like corridor to like get to the door um but i would really it's gonna be cool to so travel on the road but one of the companies i'm talking to and i haven't got any traction with but i'm gonna keep trying is uh i can't even remember the name of them but they make the um Remember in Back to the Future when Marty McFly has that little guitar and the big amplifier? Oh, yeah. It's that company. Because Hondo ah. doesn't make those. It's actually another company that made for mm-hmm. Hondo, but this company took it back. They're in Texas. I know where they're at. I'm going to Texas. So if uh, Texas isn't like <laughs> post-apocalyptic by the time I get there, I'm going to go and check this place out. I still might go. Um it seems yeah. like the world is getting more and more akin to like, like people like women are starting to look into men's like apocalyptic warlord potential. <laughs> it's like, you know, and I got that. Don't, yeah, yeah, you do. You got it in spades. Gotta, dude, check it out. You could be the humongous. <laughs> yes. I think I need to watch that movie now. I feel like I need to watch that movie. Um, we watched, like I said, we watched Thinner the other night and it was delightful. Um, <laughs> But uh, 
So you're gonna you are decided to join to dance in the world of making your own circuits, and I think you have the perfect brain for it, and I think it's gonna go really well. I do have some really really kick ass books on the subject, and oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, like um, I'm really into it too. So like I like to like create my own circuits. I re- I did pedals for a long time before I just was like. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta I can only serve so many masters, man. I gotta like back <laughs> off some stuff and like focus. I mainly basically want to focus on playing guitar more. Um, which I do for like Yeah, my my has definitely fell by the way. My guitar playing is definitely two fell to by three the hours a day at this point. This I remember yeah, those days. I'm getting a weird cramp though from playing the eight string like up in here. Actually it's uh, I've, that's ten. You were tendon, man. You know. No, it's just a, it's a new stretch. Down. It's like because like when I play six string, nothing. It's just like but to play the eight string. It's like a new amount of distance to cover. So, well, as someone who has tendonitis in both elbows from playing guitar, it's a uh, something I'm hyper aware. Uh, of. I'm not worried about it. I'll have arthritis thoroughly. <laughs> later uh, uh no you should see my dad he can't like his pinky doesn't even come i know you were saying that yeah because he's uh it's called this we call it the swedish curse because my family's scandinavian and uh my grandfather had it he had it his grandfather had it all the things so but i take better care of my hands than they do too so uh but i'm sure it's coming whatever i'll deal with it i'll get a robot hand at that point and then, like, with seven fingers. <laughs> I want to... Can you do ten? Can you do ten fingers? You can finally play Holdsworth chords. <laughs> I know. It's... <laughs> what... What? what, what ha- dude, how does he do it? That guy's insane. Um, he, he was, man. Yeah. No, he's, 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 he still watches over us, I'm sure. From... Oh, what okay. looks up at us. From the... From the... He's in the hot <laughs> place, you know what I mean? <laughs> You can't play on that many John Carpenter albums and not go to the hot place. Have you listened to the new John Carpenter album? I haven't. I, I have it to. on vinyl. It is amazing. I, it's kind of I sound like a hipster, hipster douchebag right there, but I did get it on vinyl because I'm very much a John Carpenter fan, and it is perfect. It's a per- I even sent him a Facebook message. <laughs> did he no, respond? and I don't care if he does or not. I, if it, <laughs> You know, he, I don't care, but I like, I sent him a Facebook message, like, dude, I just got your new record. It's the bomb. Your music's inspired me. Thank you. I don't expect a response or anything. I just want to say thanks for being you. And, uh, you know, if, if you play live in this part of the world, I will be there lurking behind the dumpster, crying as I masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> So a Saturday night, huh? Just a typical Tuesday night for Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> um, so I had a couple of cool ideas for this channel, and oh. one of the things I want to start doing is a, a segment called The More You Bro. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Um, I'm working on some stuff. I think my first More You Bro, I think it's gonna, I'm going to use it as a platform for me and my friends to give rants about things that piss us off. Because the first thing I'm going to talk about is the one thing that pisses me off pretty much more than anything, at least on a consistent basis, is the is just the, the, the human garbage that can't even take the cart back to the thing, you know, back to the collection spot. They just leave it in the middle of the parking spot. They don't care. Um, they're garbage. They're garbage people, and I hate, hate them. <laughs> you know? It's like... Uh, you know, people think that, like, you know, you talk about all these places, like, you know, all these people, like, defund the police department and all this other stuff. They don't get what's going to happen, <laughs> you know? Like, that, for me, the grocery store parking lot is the perfect example of why people cannot govern themselves. <laughs> Dude. Because you got to get, you got to, like, yeah. be a little more community. If you wanted to, like, have a place that was self-governed, everyone would have to be more community-minded. You know, like, not using your bullshit to dump on your neighbor you know i mean everyone would have to kind of pull weight and that's the i mean just a little bit of weight you're pulling right there you know it's it's a, you're pulling your weight I, I always take my cart back like it doesn't matter it could be the nastiest weather in the world and i think it'd be like across the parking lot Either that or i'll take it back into the store you know what i mean like 
More often than not, I'll just leave it at the you know at the store and just carry. Yeah, the but bags. Not, not, not like but yeah, you don't leave it. You don't leave it in the parking. I can't tell you how many times I've turned into what I think is an open parking spot to be blindsided by a. Uh, I don't know how many people I've there. yelled at. Like I've literally like, stopped like a dude. Like the guy gets out of his thing, and he puts the cart and he just kind of pushes it away, and I like pull in front of him with my truck. I'm like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, you're gonna you're gonna put that in the thing." All right, I'm gonna beat you to death with it, because <laughs> that's uh, that's how mad it makes me. But I know I have plenty of friends that kind of like want to do that. Like definitely the YouTube channel, I wanted to just be like a big conglomeration of all, me and all my <laughs> friends, like you know, uh, bitching about things that make them angry. Um, you know, uh, so grind the gears segment. Yeah, we'll grind your gears. Uh, but I don't want to get sued by Family Guy. I already got a copyright claim on one of my videos this week, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it means you made it. What's that? Uh, I used the Benny Hill theme in something, and I got copyright. Oh, Yakety yeah. Sax. Um, I did like a. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Well, It's really good, but I did that, and then I got copyright claimed. And then I had another yeah. video get the copyright claim released. Um, one of the cool things about uh, the other podcast I'm on is that we got uh, it's the drill with Dr. Brady podcast. We got mentioned on Joe Rogan. Um, and I had the video of that where they were talking about <laughs> Dr. Brady and like the work we do. Um, and they copyright claimed it, but they also like blocked it. Like Joe Rogan's merciless. Like his people are merciless. Like, <laughs> they're like, you know, you cannot do this. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yesterday or the day before I got a, um, a text or a email and they're like, we released a copyright hold on it. And I was just like, oh. so we, that's just a big deal. I mean, like Joe Rogan's like the yeah. Jesus of podcasting. <laughs> I don't know. Does that sound right? Uh, <laughs> maybe he's the Abraham of podcasting. <laughs> uh, and God said on to Abraham, kill me a son. <laughs> um, I mean, he's the Jackaria, <laughs> but I, um, one of the things that I'm super excited about is getting to try like the victory amps. I've never tried them. Like I've never got to play them. I've never had an opportunity to play them. I've played one years, demoed one years ago. I don't have m much memory of it. I want to check out. I can't the be of any help. Nor can I be entertaining, apparently. <laughs> I was thinking, like, well, I just, like, I want to get a small collection of really cool high-gain heads. Like, I just want, like, a small, modest collection. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really thinking about going on a modeler path, though, um, just for ease of use and the fact that I'm doing all this recording, like, tons of recording. And I haven't used a real amp in a recording in a long time, seriously. Like... Even the yeah, it's been a while. Even me. the last record I did, I used it when we did the the scratch tracks and stuff. But then the second I got it back to my home studio, I was just like, "Plugins, let's do." This. <laughs> I got, I just bought a new batch, a bunch of batches of plugins. Speaking of signature gear, and I found one that's super cool. And if you're in, if you want some like heavier tones, I would highly recommend uh, even just downloading the free uh, Stevie T um, ML Sound Labs pack. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, it looks like a piece of car, like an amp drawn on some cardboard. <laughs> it's called the Gent, <laughs> and it's the Gent God amp, and it's uh, pretty awesome. I bought his whole pack because it was all pretty good. But I also um, nice. got some Neural DSP stuff, the Gojira Neural DSP stuff. Oh, oh. dude, oh god, I'd be interested. Dude's in that. a sledgehammer, yeah. man. Um, especially for being French. But speaking of signature plugins, dude, I Gojira. So oh, good, yeah. nicest guys. I I told you I wrote. Yeah, you did. You did show. wrote it. You told me that. Yeah. Um, them and Lamb of God. Yeah. How would you? Who would you say was funner to be around? <laughs> uh, well, I interacted more with the Gojira guys because they were the opener at the time. This was what twenty or two thousand six. So they barely barely were. This was like in deep America in your heady time. Ron Jeremy days, wasn't it? <laughs> Basically, yeah. They were the nicest guys. Like, uh, they were so sweet and so polite and so much fun to be around. And the Lamb of God guys were really nice. But they they were just 
mostly just hey we're tired of touring and we're just on the bus didn't really uh, interact as much though uh, randy Blythe was really nice yeah, i've heard I, I, like, i've seen him at, like chili cook-offs and stuff like I guess he like he'll go like a, seek out like a chili cook off like skateboard over a chili cook off. <laughs> oh, dude! Like when you're on the road, like the last. I mean, you're just like fast food and out, and you're like oh, yeah. top ramen and shit. So like, real, I used to yeah. like when when I was doing that kind of stuff, I would always like find ways for like farmers markets or soup kitchens <laughs> just to get a hot meal that wasn't like awful. Um. But this is uh, well. I think we should start wrapping the sucker up. But this, yeah, yeah, it's been a yeah, long but one. It's good. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, dude. Like, I'm gonna be in Texas. My next next week's podcast will be with my father. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you got any questions, I look forward. If you got any to questions it. for him, Josh? Actually, see, I want you to. I'm gonna task you with thinking of some questions for my dad. You okay. got like two days. Send me like. 10 questions or something for, for my dad All because right. it'd be cool otherwise we'll, we'll just we'll see me and him we'll just shoot the shit and we'll go nowhere <laughs> what if we got so i'm gonna I get my wife to do a couple too like you got any questions we should get our both our uh, wives to uh to get on here and just prove that we're not complete utter man children well yeah that's fair actually that's not a bad call yeah maybe we'll have to do like a like a couple's Maybe we'll just let them do an episode of each other and we can just fuck <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, thank you for joining us this week on Man Childing is Hard. Uh, Definitely. If thank you. If you would like to sponsor our show, you can do so through Anchor. We're on iTunes finally. I got that done. It took forever. Um, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, if you go to Lil George Granoth YouTube channel, there's all sorts of stuff there. And all my friends are going to start dumping stuff in there. Like, because. Uh, Everyone wants to have a YouTube channel, but it's a lot of work. So it's always just cool if you can just like piggyback on someone else's and you know, it's win. That's been my plan. It's win win. <laughs> it's really win win. I get yeah. the content and stuff and I get some variety and I get to kind of hang out with somebody and uh you get to make content on a channel. That doesn't suck. I actually got a bunch of subscribers today. It's weird. But uh, <laughs> Uh, so if you want to like, if you like to advertise for the man Channing is hard podcast uh, to like tens of followers, you can uh, please just, uh, <laughs> uh, make those checks out to cash. Uh, do not send them to Josh. <laughs> I'll never see him. <laughs> um, you'll see him when they've compounded. Yes, interest. yes, yes, yes. Speaking of compound <laughs> interest, uh, bitcoins do very well. If you want to make some money, invest in Bitcoin. Cause I've made a bunch of money this week. So, that's been the episode, and uh, we will see you on the flip side. Stay fantastic. See you next always. time. Always. Good night. Honking. Well, you know I got a big turd honking. Looking for the run.